Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Black Lightning. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So a few things end up being uh, stuff connected to Lala. I saw all those different people around him. I was like, are those people that are like, connected to like people he's killed before and like tattoos and stuff like that? It turns out to be the case. But I do like the fact is that obviously, I, last episode I brought up the fact is I'm curious like about the 100 situation. Situation that they're probably kind of being caught up in this whole ASA thing, too. They can't really run things like they used to. And, but it seems like Lala's come back to kind of shift that balance because obviously, like, you had the 100 kind of like uh, buying food. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're up here scraping for like crumbs and scraps. The fact of the matter is kind of seeing that the 100 are kind of freeland royalty. And the fact of the matter is like, this isn't how we do things because there's someone else. Um, Sinzel uh, Johnson, this dude's kind of running things, and Lala's kind of come back to take position. Dude shoots Lala a lot, but obviously Lala gets up. Um, I did like that moment. They're like, Lala, you just by yourself, and in that moment, it shifts to show you, like, oh yeah, like he, um, those guys that were with him were uh, ghosts essentially. So obviously, it seems like seeing more and more power displayed from Lala. So I'm, I'm interested to see where he kind of takes things now because Tobias isn't around now that he's kind of been removed. I think we're going to see even more. Like, it's obviously like... It's turning into almost a three to slash four way battle in Freeland because obviously you have the ASA taking control. Now you potentially have the 100 kind of jumping into the mix, you know, tr probably taking what they believe is theirs. It's like we kind of run Freeland our way. You not here to do yours. Obviously, there's the police and there's a whole complicated nature between like Henderson trying to balance, obviously, you know, keeping everything under control with, with the police, but also having to sadly answer to the ASA. You know, there is a lot of forces going on in here. And the reason why I say four, because, you know, there is a there is the resistance as well. And if you want to make the argument about the Markovians. So there's like so many angles to like this Freeland situation. So I'm really interested to see what Lala ultimately ends up doing, because obviously he's trying to get access to that computer uh, to biases. But um, will he actually get access to it? I don't know um, what's actually up there. We don't 100 percent, you know. Well, we have an idea, obviously, but what Lala's going to use, what Lala's in particular going to do with the laptop is the whole, well, not, well, the information that's up there regardless, you know, so there's that side of things. Then there's the whole uh, Anissa thing. She's on the other side of uh, the barrier and everything, and there's actually a little bad blood between her and the Purdy's, which is interesting because it's like, which is I, you can almost say, you can borderline saying that, like, Anissa's kind of got a little bit of full of herself. Because, obviously, that was even a conversation that Lynn and um, Jeff had about the fact is that it's like, oh, girl, she's all grown up. And it's kind of like Jeff is like, yeah, she sure thinks she is. Or at least she kind of makes it seem like, yeah, she knows that she is. And that's always something that's interesting because I feel like Anissa has a tendency. And it's something we've seen kind of pop up where she kind of, like... Gets a little over, but like obviously her heart's in the right place, but I feel like sometimes her head goes beyond where her, like she kind of gets a little big headed. I think, you know, she can be. Because obviously, like I said, there's beef between her and her parties because they're like, you're going about this the weird way. Because the fact of the matter is, yeah, you want to help people. I get that. But we, the parties, got to look after our people, too, which I'm sure for, you know, Anissa is like, yeah, but these are people that are desperately in need. We need to get them out of Freeland before there's home. You know, with everything that's going down, that that's. Freeland's going to implode with all of this, and we need to get as many people out. Help them, you know, what, no matter what the course is. And even Anissa throwing out, like, the fact of the matter is, I helped you, I helped your baby. And she, the girl tried to, like, throw it in. It's like, yeah, but because you, my mom got killed. It's like, you came to me for help and everything, which is why I'm talking about, like, the fact is, like, she's letting kind of her own emotions kind of get the better of her in that regard, you know, in the case of Anissa. So I just thought that was kind of interesting, even to the point kind of being like, you know, if I want to, I could break this entire place down by myself. I'm like, these are people that are helping you. Like I get you're having a disagreement, but do you really have to kind of come off threatening? Even the dad was like, oh, you threat? She's like, oh, am I threatening you? And then chokes him with her superhuman strength. I'm like, come on. Don't you believe that you're crossing a line here? Like you're pushing the boundaries because, and I think it's very befitting that she is this vigilante 
a Blackbird right now instead of Thunder because I think this definitely wouldn't look good. Definitely doesn't look good on her end. Like, obviously, they're trying to come to some arrangement because at the same time, and this is like, yo, I paid you the money, no backseats on this situation. The fact of the matter is, like, you're getting pay paid well to help these people, so that's going to help you in the end. And the fact of the matter is, you even have some of these people help you garden and stuff like that to kind of help you grow food and stuff like that. So it's like, there's a win-win to this. At, but, uh, you know, at the same time, it's also like, you should be helping people regardless, you know, the fact is, because I'm sure it's also that thing of like, yeah, you're purdies and stuff like that, but also these are black people too that are in need and you're not, you're not making a point to help them either, you know, I, I think that could be an argument that could be made, at least I would think that's something Anissa would kind of argue in that right, but regardless, uh, they kind of made it clear that like they will never trust her again. So that's going to complicate future relationships. That's going to turn into an issue all on its own. Who knows if, when the time comes, they might sell Anissa out because of this particular situation. Or like she causes too much trouble to save their own highs to keep the purdy okay. Like it's, hey, like Blackbird, she was here. She's doing all this shady stuff. Take care of it type of thing. I don't know. Um, even comparing her to the, um, the Sanjay, which is kind of like... Super interesting considering, well, how messed up that whole situation was, uh, the whole looker situation. And then, like, comparing Anissa to them, I, you know, that's apples and oranges, but it, it, it's a whole thing. I just think I'm very interested to see where that goes. Obviously, Anissa's taking down because um, the Markovians are getting ready for an assault. Obviously, we see them kind of like powered up. Like their army is ready. She takes up takes out a few scouts ahead of time because trying to keep them away from the per um, Purdy territory. Which you can make the argument is like, oh, you doing that just to help the Purdy, or are you doing that because it benefits your situation and trying to get people out, or is it a combination of two? I like to think it's a combination of the two, just because it's like you don't want them to the Purdy's to kind of end up getting caught up in this, you know, war that's basically coming to Freeland. So there's that side of things. Um, there's the whole Khalil situation, which I thought was kind of interesting, uh, because basically that Gamby was watching a video and it's talking about like, oh, some dude is, you know, talking about the truth. He's part of the resistance and Freeland and he brings in Khalil's mom. And it's like, oh, yeah, the ASA, they made my baby the way he is. And then they killed him. And it's like, OK. And even Gamby was like, they didn't at the very least hide her voice it's like you modified your voice but you couldn't do the same thing to her it's like you could easily tell that was khalil's mom which that put her even more so in the crosshairs because it's like yeah we need her to kind of stop talking so what's messed up is we see that they brought khalil back but he isn't just khalil they full-blown made him painkiller making him like they altered his memories because like he's up here saying like oh i got this military experience i got this knowledge stuff like that it's like no you're you're a high schooler so obviously that's where you but it's like the same time it's like yeah they modified him probably even his in his brain, he has a modified past because when he did meet his mom later on, he didn't recognize her, which even Williams was like, had a look on his face like, oh, you're sending him to kill his own mom, which is super messed up. But at the same time, it's like, it almost seemed like even he was like, is this the right move? But he was saying that from a perspective of like, oh, he has a new chip in his head. They, you know, uh, they, I guess, gave him a new device to kind of fix his spine, kind of similar to what he had before. They probably kind of remade it or whatever, but uh, it's like, is it really a good idea to send him out? Because this will be his first mission like this. And it's like, we don't want, because they want it. He was suggesting like pick some other mission because maybe the brain chip won't a hundred percent like be in control when he has to kill his own mom because his mom, that, that connection there might be enough to pull him back. So that's why he was like, no, but obviously for, Odell is like, this is the perfect test for that because if he can do this, this means that it works and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, which is also interesting because we do see that his powers have been modified too because whereas before he needed to, like, shoot, like, that paralytic um, agent at you, like his poison, um, now he can straight up just touch you because he was strangling his mom and the poison went from his hand. So, like, he's almost, like, more venomous snake now i like to think regardless like i said i'm going on a bit of a tangent but i think that's kind of where they're kind of angling it not less it's like it all that's embedded in his skin now so his skin's kind of in regardless that was just kind of a sad way to see things go because he doesn't even recognize his own mom he kills her and balances like it's nothing Obviously, this is probably going to tie into Jennifer's story because Jennifer might be the key to bringing him back i mean that begs the question of like when well because obviously 
they're not going to kill Jennifer. I mean, you know, until the family, unless the family proves to be disobedient, but it's like they're necessary uh, for what uh, the ASA is doing. So it's like, I doubt that'd be a thing, but she might be the key to kind of bringing him back to his humanity. But there might be a point where it's like, even she can't bring him back, you know? So I think that's kind of interesting, which also Jennifer's kind of stuck alone right now. Um, Odell visits her and be like, oh, the fact of the matter is we're on the same side and stuff like that, which I think is so funny considering obviously that happens later on in the episode. I'm talking about things out of order, but the fact of the matter is later on you send you know, her boyfriend to kill his own mother. So it's kind of like, oh, we're on the same side. It's like, no, you're more so on your side. Like, yeah, it's that thing of like, oh, Dale tries to balance it. to be like, oh, I'm a good guy. We're on the same side. We're fighting the same fight. This is a good fight to be on. But it's like, you're willing to sacrifice people to kind of cover up certain things. Once again, it's like, what you did to Issa last episode for the purpose of like, oh, like any, no one can know that the president kind of signed off all on this stuff. He needs to have plausible deniability and all of that. So it's like, just so word doesn't spread around about some of the super messed up things that the ASA has done, because some, some of that stuff will be labeled as just rumors. No one will know for sure that like, oh, they're behind all of this, that, you know, that's why they sent him to kill, you know, Khalil to send his own, kill his own mom. So it's just like, so he's making it seem like, oh, I'm doing this. You know, I want to uh, sending this video of your parents to you to make it seem like everything's OK. It's, it's just a whole complicated mess, which obviously like this whole situation is kind of turning Freeland inside out because to the point like the kids are fighting at school and she's like, well, what are you doing? Like, almost, it was almost like a fight club. Everyone's kind of jumping around like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like she gets in the middle. It's like. We got to hold on to some semblance of who we are. Are we really going to, like, lose ourselves like this, become the animals? That they're kind of, like, we're caged like animals doesn't mean we have to act like it. And so when the time comes, like, you know, she's just like, you know what? I'm. She's walking away. One of the dudes grabs onto her. She ends up laying both dudes out, and everyone's kind of cheering. She's like, come on, sh shut up about all that. And she's like, you know what? You guys have changed. I'm not the same either. So I'm curious to see where that angle of things end up going for Jennifer. Uh, because, like, without Jeff there to kind of piece everything together, which I'm curious, like, has anyone said anything about, oh, oh man, Jeff is going. I'm wondering what that's all about. Maybe it's just kind of like they probably set up stuff ahead of time. I'm like, yeah, he had to be away from the school for a while, but... Jeff is kind of that guiding light, and in these dark times, they would need a guiding light, like a guiding light like that. But now that he's going, you know, so I'm I'm curious in the end to see what where that all kind of ends up taking us, because I think that's a precursor to not just in the school, but the entirety of Freeland as well. So I think that has to kind of be considered. Uh, there's a whole situation I think uh, what's interesting is the divide between Jeff and Lynn because they have very different approaches to this whole thing and feelings about this. Obviously, Lynn wants to help out the kids because it's like these kids need help. Like, I know what Odell is. I see him for who he really is. The fact of the matter is I'm helping these kids because I want to help these kids. But Jeff is like, but you're helping these kids. You know, if you help Odell, you're helping turn these kids even more so into weapons. But it's that it's that whole complicated thing of like you see both sides because Jeff's case it's kind of like yeah like if we if you help Odell who is doing some super super shady stuff like you are helping you it, in a sense you're almost an accessory to everything that he is doing like you you might be trying to do good but so much bad is going to come about because of what he's doing the fact that he's turning these kids into weapons and stuff but obviously at the same time for Lynn it's like but these are kids the fact of the matter is they didn't ask for this they find themselves in this situation the fact of the matter is I'm looking out for them because no one else will because Odell will without a second thought sacrifice and use anyone once again we've seen that time and time again we literally saw it last episode with Issa we see it in this same episode in this episode with Khalil the fact is literally turning her, him into a weapon which I'm curious what Lynn's gonna think about that like wait a minute minute because obviously Odell had talked about the fact he's using a brain chip once finding out it works it can be used on meta humans and humans meaning he could get loyal soldiers who won't even think about compromising like anything to be like oh you're 100 percent under my control you got brainwashed sh soldiers so that applies to like Lynn being able to get her to do whatever you want her to do without hesitation same thing because Jeff is the most resistant Lynn reluctantly works with him but obviously like Jeff doesn't see that because like for him he's just so fueled by the fact is like why can't you see what's really going on here it's for him he feels like she's not willing you know to see the bigger picture here which Lynn's probably saying the same thing about Jeff of like you're not seeing the bigger picture here I'm trying to um, help people out in this particular case Miriam 
Now, that in itself leads to some interesting um, stuff, too, because it's like there and Lynn makes a point of like the human body wasn't meant to do what a metahuman is capable of doing. So obviously they can stabilize their cells, but continual use of your powers breaks that, you know, stabilization down. So your cells go back into free fall form, you know, anyway, uh, anyway, I think that's so interesting because that's an issue that I, I could be mistaken. It's never come up with the flash. It's never been a thing of like, oh, someone's abilities are kind of like destroying them to a certain extent. It's like that's never come up before. But I think it's just because we're dealing with two very different avenues of becoming metahumans, whether it be like the straight up vaccine or whether it be the green light. Whereas in the flash, it's the particle accelerator. Obviously, later on has introduced other means of a certain, you know, obviously season four of like there was a, the aspect of like new metahumans being created, but it was a similar of a similar vein as the particle accelerator. Because I think the big difference is dark matter. We I don't know. I mean, I think it's been brought up about the vaccine, but I don't remember what was exactly in the vaccine that um led to metahumans. They probably did discuss it, and I just don't remember. And the same thing for green light. But the fact of the matter is there's elements probably in the particle accelerator and obviously later events, like obviously like as I'm referencing, like the dark matter that came from Barry coming out of the Speed Force created metahumans in season four of The Flash. Um, in particular, it was one in like 12. So it's like, I think it leads to this... It's an interesting conversation of just kind of like, I guess, like those led to some interesting stabilization that that, that metahumans in that universe have compared to this one, which once again, it's like the universe is like kind of kept separate. So it's hard to say whether or not they really take place in the same universe. But regardless, it's just that the fact is the metahuman gene situation works very differently in this show than it does in The Flash. And I think that's kind of interesting, kind of breaking it down like that to the point like Miriam's hair is falling out. She's bleeding out of her eyes. Her fingernails are popping out. She's just like sick to the point like she even referenced the fact is, well, this is more so because they were fighting, but like someone else. Well, no, because she has said that someone's like, toes or whatever are just like falling off so it's like kind of showing you like that's literally what they're going through and the fact that she can't keep food down that's literally comparing to like that's like chemo treatment like what's happening to her body it's almost like her body's her body's literally well because the whole metahuman gene probably like pumps your body full of you know radiation once again it's just you know look at jeff's situation being very very different you know which that also led to an argument because jeff is like i understand where she's coming from because i'm a metahuman but lynn's like i'm a doctor so don't tell me like what questions i should ask the patient because jeff ended up pushing her to kind of learn information which i don't think he pushed her like he said inform it's not like he was drilling her it's like he casually asked these questions which it's something you didn't need to know that the fact of the matter is odell is having these metahumans fight and that is something that should be taken note of of like oh like because he's having them train against each other because eventually they will most likely go up against other metahumans you know the markovians will have so it's like preparing them ahead of time of like oh not just facing people but also metahumans so that in itself you know so Obviously, Lynn is asking Jeff to just trust her, which I'm like, I think Lynn has some plan, like at least or at least trust that like I am doing what is right here. You know, it's not, you know, I'm I have the best of intentions. But once again, the road to hell is paved with them, you know, so this could come back to bite her. But, you know. You know, and like I said, you can't fault Lynn because she is following her heart and trying to do the right thing. She is a doctor. She is trying to do no harm. Like, yes, like, you know, and if she sees what's in front of her and what this potentially could mean later on. Yes, but it still doesn't change the fact is that these people, these kids need help and she's doing her best to help in that regard. So I don't know. It, it was just kind of an interesting, you know, divide that's, you know, tension that's being created between them. So I'm interested to see kind of where that goes going forward. Um, it's just a little bit in the episode, but I think it's kind of interesting too that one of like Henderson's cops, she's a, a sergeant, ends up uh, Sergeant King ended up getting taken uh, because they are gathering meta humans because it's like yeah, uh, if she's a meta human, we gotta light her, lock her up. But it's also about you know adding more to their army because they're gonna put people through the camp and stuff like that. But eventually it's like yeah, we're gonna circle you around. Obviously they're boosting people's powers. I'm um, like obviously we know that they're doing that to Jeff, which Odell and them like Jeff and Lynn have kind of kept their quiet about like what's happening that the fact is that jeff is getting stronger but obviously odell and the asa are starting to notice like yeah there's certain like neurological like there are things neurally 
um, that are going on with Jeff's brain that are kind of piecing together like, oh, his powers are grown, that he's starting to use them more and more. So it's like you're probably going to start taking notice. So he has to be a lot more careful about that. So either way, um, a lot of interesting things went on in this episode. So I'm very interested to see, you know, ultimately where all this ends up taking us going forward. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.